couple days ago, I attempted a late evening IFR flight from Durango, Telluride Regional Airport, KTEX, in the EMB 110 Bondurante that went horribly wrong on a missed approach. That had me pretty shook up, so I've spent the last several flights practicing localizer, RNAV, and circle to land approaches. The EMB 110 requires a lot more work to configure for approach and landing than what I'm used to in the Cessna 152 and 172, which is why I'm really enjoying this aircraft because it is a challenge. But with so much more happening at once, unfamiliar workflows spiral out of control, and RNAV approaches where I don't have a glide slope especially in boxed-in terrain, are not yet my specialty, so practicing those approaches under VMC is definitely needed. Shutting off autopilot at this point and making my first attempt at circle to land, entering left downwind to get over to runway 27 from a localizer runway 9 approach. Circling on any of the approaches to Telluride is not available at night, but looking at this terrain it's easy to see why. It requires courting the sloping plateau where Mountain Village lies east of the airport. feeling hesitant about dropping lower over this mesa on my first attempt, but I've got just over 2,000 feet to lose, so I'm fussing a bit with power, pitch, and bank angle trying to manage a sizable descent in the space I have left. definitely approaching too high, so I'm hooking an S into my base turn to final to try and draw it out just a bit more.
This second practice run is to work on the RNAV-Z approach for runway 9. I started the flight from the ETL-VOR initial approach fix and could have sworn I set it up at 13,000 feet but found myself instead at 23,000 so I'm taking a detour while working on losing 10,000 feet. Now that I'm back on track, I'll be dropping to 12,900 feet on my way to the SEPMA waypoint and get the plane configured for the approach. First I need to get down to 140 knots, then dropping first level of flaps and slowing further. Propeller sink off and auto feather set. Fuel condition to high idle. And hydraulic booster pump on. Looks like I missed activating the gyro horizon and emergency lighting switch a few minutes ago, so let's catch that here. And gear down. I had persistent trouble loading that SEPMA final approach fix into both the world map flight plan and into the Garmin, so I just know that it's at 10 miles from the runway and that's where I'll begin my 3.6 degree descent. So I'm keeping an eye on that DME to the runway. A couple miles to final approach fix and I'm going to full flaps now so I can attempt to be as consistent on my configuration and manage airspeed and vertical speed from start to end of descent. Meanwhile, setting the autopilot here to an altitude of 9100 feet so I can have that open all the way to the runway. The Jeppesen plate kindly maps out the descent rate and if I maintain my 94 knot speed, I'll want to shoot for 600 feet per minute. But if I'm nudging a bit more than 100 knots, I'll want to shoot more for 700 feet per minute. and beginning my descent now. Doing this under VMC, I could fly the rest of the way manually for sure, but I want to see how well I could manage autopilot on the approach without a glide slope uh, for cases where I have minimums that run closer to runway altitude. In those cases, I'll be calibrating accuracy of my descent rate off DME for altitude, but in this case, I'll be using the Pappy lights. With this cockpit, keeping an eye on the airspeed indicator, autopilot descent rate, and runway alignment and pappy lights is a real bear all at once. So I had to get more fluid using saved cockpit views on each of those during final approach. Placement of the autopilot is really challenging if you're trying to watch instruments and exterior while also trying to aim your mouse onto that tiny adjustment dial. So I mapped that to my HOTUS controller. I press trigger plus B and the hatch switch to nudge it up and down. So that's what I'm doing here. And this is just a spectacular approach. Same as the circle to land approach. This final RNAV segment takes you pretty close to that plateau on the left there. So definitely not something you'd want to be imprecise on if you were inbound in full dark. Coming off autopilot now to manually land and get us better aligned to the right.
This upward slope on the taxiway just off the runway is like one last little skill test for finessing your taxi thrust when you thought you were all done. Truck zooming in over there had me thinking some daredevil was landing on a side road for a second. I hope you enjoyed those two approaches to Telluride Regional Airport in the EMB 110. It's spectacular when you have good visibility, but absolutely formidable in IMC conditions unless you're completely fluent with your aircraft, fully briefed, and follow the approach procedures precisely.